This is Divorce, Happy, and Successful, the number one spiritually focused self-empowerment podcast for divorced parents that's dedicated to helping you live the fulfilling life you deserve and experience the happiness you long for. Let's get into today's show with our host, W. Mark Watts. Hey, everybody, it's W. Mark Watts, and in today's episode, I want to switch gears a little bit take the focus off of us, the parents or the individuals a little, and I want to shed some light and discuss more the kids. So I want to switch gears a little bit. The topic tonight is really, does divorce adversely affect children, affect the children of divorce? How does that, what happens there? And because the reason why I want to talk about it is because it's always a topic on the forefront of my mind because as you well know, I have a 14-year-old son now at the time of this recording, and he's going through changes in the teenage years and playing sports and trying to manage that with academics, et cetera. So he's got a handful of challenges, and you're going to hear, I'm sure you've seen studies and you see talk shows and people ranting and raving about, you know, just how much divorce affects kids. Uh, and, you know, my research and my experience has been somewhat to the contrary in that what I've found and what I've witnessed is that life itself affects kids, not necessarily just the fact that they are or come from a divorced family. In fact, one report will show that 25% of adults whose parents had divorced experienced serious social, emotional, or psychological troubles as compared with 10% of those whose parents remained together. So roughly what's that saying is, you know, this research reflects that about 15% of adult children of divorce experience problems over and above those from stable families. So that 15% though cannot and has not been defined further by exactly was it just the fact that the parents were divorced that caused these issues? Was it poor parenting? Was it the death of, you know, what exactly was it? There's no more research so far that delineates and contributes and or attributes that 15% to the mere fact that they were are come from a divorced house. So that gives me hope, number one, and that's where I like to start with it because my focus is and always will be how can I help my kid and myself develop, continue to grow, and be a leader regardless of the circumstances, regardless of if uh, we're from a divorced family or not, because I'm from a divorced family. And um, so I'm always looking to get better regardless. Now, um, you know, my son listens to a lot of hip hop slash rap music, and a lot of it is a lot less desirable than I care to admit. But the funny thing is that I did too. Now, I probably caught on to it or maybe a little bit later than he did. Not very much so, though. I, 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 but now, now that I really think about it, I believe I started listening to rap music maybe around age 12 or so, 11, 12. And I would say that's probably around the age that he got into it as well. Now, what I did listen to back in, in that time, it was a little less graphic and a little less negative, but I listened to the same types of songs because there became a choice and I chose to listen to some of the same types of music that he listens to. Now, the other thing that I found though is that not only did kids from divorced or broken homes listen to this music, but so did the kids from non-divorced homes. So ultimately, the question becomes, how do I positively influence my son's development in an area of life that's of real importance to him? Because we all know that once kids really enjoy music, it becomes the centerpiece of their lives. And it becomes something that affects what they do, what their, their language, some of their thoughts, so it's really, it really becomes deeply ingrained because I know that I've listened to music for probably three quarters of my life 
And it's very important to me. It's instrumental in, in what I do and how I think and how I, how I manage and maneuver through this world. So now I want to say, okay, I, I don't want to discredit the importance, but I don't want to tr- make it such a negative thing that, of course, the teenager then rebels and doesn't listen to anything I say. So what I have to do is I have to now think, okay, how, what are some good ways? And I have to try things. And I have to be willing to work with him to manage this and to open up the lines of discussion, which leads me to my first point is what I decided to do and what has worked pretty well for me over the years with my son is I sit down with him and I talk with him and I share honest stories. I find I create that common bond. I, I, I have stories that really create a connection between what he's experiencing and doing and what I experienced and did so that it becomes a safe place for us to talk and have an open, honest dialogue just about what he's listening to, why he's listening to it, you know, just how important it is to him. But that, to me, gives me, it gives us a platform for now which He can come and we can speak honestly because that's always been a platform that I wanted to create for my son and for us is that I want him to always know that we can always discuss things. Now, I'm still the parent and I still am going to have my opinions and there will be times when I have to be more forceful and directing. But there are times also when I have to listen and be amenable to finding other solutions. And so I want him to know that I'm never so much farther above or different than he is. You know, I did those same things. So I want I want to be real honest with him because I think you gain a lot more by being honest with your kids about situations and things than you do by trying to separate yourself from them and, and give the impression that you're so different or that you didn't do those things. Because, in fact, I actually did. And I I still listen to uh, rap, hip-hop music to this day. Now, I listen to a lot less than I used to, and I'm a lot more selective than I used to be, but that comes with age. So I just want him to know that, hey, that is okay if that's your choice. But you also have other choices. So let's sit down and talk about and have dialogue. With the course, the ultimate goal is I want him to evaluate honestly what he's doing and start to think about other things and maybe make some different choices in the future. Then number two is I want to be mindful of just degrading the hip hop music in in and of itself, because in and of itself, it's not a bad thing. It's art. It's an expression of, of ideas and thoughts and real life experiences just like any other music is. However, the the means of delivery can be a little coarse and a little graphic and a little harsh and overly negative, which is what I want to really shed the light on is that as you can continue to allow these negative thoughts and these negative vibes into your system, ultimately, you have to have those thoughts because... Garbage in, garbage out, still applies. But I don't want to just discredit the art form because, as we all know, just as we would have done when we were kids, if you tell your teenager, do not listen to this music or it's all bad, what is that going to do? It's like bees and honey. As soon as you say it's horrible, they're going to want it even more. So I definitely don't ever want that to be an option. So I'm always mindful that, I don't want to just say it's bad, don't do it, blah, 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 because that will attract him more. I want to do the opposite. I want to talk with him and have those conversations so that I that hopefully there will become a time and a day when he will start to realize some of those things for himself. And once he realizes them for himself, then that opens the door for change. Now, I'm also really big on discovering and dis- the talking about the topic, talking about the music in terms of 
educating him on exactly what it is, you know, where it came from, you know, why was hip hop music created? It was because kids were looking for an alternative to keep them off of the streets. So then as I can start to give him more of the foundation, you know, where did it start? You know, what happened to the music? What are the potentials in the music? Does it really affect the way you think? Does it affect different groups of people differently? Is it real? Is there any truth to it? So I want to create an intelligent conversation around this thing so that it becomes, it takes on its own life. And he realizes how important and how big it is and how deep it is and just how much goes into what he takes for granted in that it's just music. I'm just listening to rap music. So I want to give him a new framework for this entity that we call rap or hip hop music so that now we move the conversation from it being a thing to it being a real live and growing and uh, metamorphosi- metamorphosizing entity. It, make it more real. Make it more tangible. Then another thing I want to do is now I really want to offer and introduce, recommend alternatives. That's the conversation we had last night. You know, we were just talking about music in general, and, uh, and I wanted him to understand just how much rap music he listens to. And that I that there are other alternatives out there. So he offered up, well, Dad, I listen to some country music. I'm like, well, that's great. You know, that's a start. And that's exactly what I told him. That's a start. But yet you're still limiting yourself. You still have to continue to look out there because there's so many other genres of music that are great. You know, there's jazz. And we've spoken about jazz. And, of course, there's R&B. And I know he does listen to some R&B. That's classical there's a lot of different genres of music out there that you can dig into. I mean, there's other cultures, their types of music. So I want him to start to really think more broad and expand what he's, what he thinks of music as. And because it's much more than just rap and hip hop. So we had those conversations and I'll continue to water those seeds as the days go on. And I'll continue to introduce some more things to him, just as I have over the years. And hopefully, you know, we'll see some 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 of the fruits of those labors at a later date. And then finally, what I really have made efforts to do, and I'm sure you have as well. But I just want to emphasize it here um, just to highlight the fact that you can never underestimate how important supporting your children is and providing that continued guidance because the one thing that I remember and I will take with me uh, throughout the days of my life is the fact that it's the repetition so it's the it's the correct message so it's the encouraging message and messages over a long period of time that stick with me so it's the my sister constantly um, making me pronounce words correctly. It's my mother consistently making me do my chores on time. It's my teachers over the years constantly asking me and, and requiring me to respect them and the classroom. So it's those repeated messages that stick. So what am I saying? What I'm saying is it can't be a one-time occurrence that you speak on topics like music. There has to be a consistent, supportive effort and supportive guidance over a period of time because it's the repetition that creates the change, not just the windstorm. You can't blow into the room one night and have this tirade and think that it's going to all wash wash away and go away the next day. And just to piggyback on that, make sure that you're doing it with love. And love means multiple things. Even though it's only a four-letter word, it's a huge word because it encompasses, you know, sympathy. It encompasses kindness. 
but it also encourages respect. It encourages responsibility and it requires change. And those boundaries have to be firm sometimes because let's just be honest, if we aren't firm and if there aren't pain, there isn't pain and there aren't repercussions, oftentimes there's no change and growth. And ultimately, that's what we're after. We're after positive, understanding, growth. And we have to drive that car. We have to be in the driver's seat. We have to push that envelope and really ensure that we do all we can to help our kids develop and be happy and make proper choices because we're not going to be there always. And we're not going to be there a lot of the times when they have to make decisions. So our job is to really teach them now so that they can go out and make those good decisions for themselves because there are going to be times when they are make, will make decisions that will hurt them just as we have. And just as we still do every single day, we're no different. But the thing that I really like to, to really keep in my crosshairs is just that let's continue to talk. Let's continue to work together. And at the end of the day, we will put together a nice piece of work. And that's what I really am after is the end result. And I may not see that end result today. I may not get it the way I want to get it. It may not happen the way I want it to happen. But I have to believe and I am very confident and comfortable in the fact that if I continue to press forward in a positive way, if I continue to learn more about how to be a better parent, if I continue to uh, extend my arm and my reach and we have discussions that we will see good results. So I hope that this was helpful for you tonight. And I know that if you continue to do the great things that you're doing in your life, you will see those good results as well. So let's not buy into necessarily all that we hear. Divorce is so bad for kids. What we have to focus on is being good, being great for our kids and lending that support and that guidance so that it becomes less of a topic. So that one day there won't be statistics that say so profoundly that divorce negatively affects kids so horribly. That's our job is to make those statistics and those reports go away. That's all I got for you today. I know I'm doing my part. I know you're doing your part. Continue to make every single day great. And I will talk with you again next week. You've been listening to the Divorce Happy and Successful Podcast. If you enjoyed today's show, be sure to leave us a five-star rating and review on iTunes. Until next time, stay focused and keep moving forward.